I think a lot of times it, it's kind of hard to describe that as though like there's a moment of discovery. Um, one of the things that in the process of working on RNA interference that that told me right away that you know I needed to work on this, I, I just was so mystified by it, was um, one sort of serendipitous um, evening, I was the last person in the lab and I had been doing experiments and also trying to run the lab and so you know, I had left my microscope on all day and I hadn't sat down at it and it was still on and I turned off the lights and the microscope was on and I walked back to the microscope to, to turn it off and you know I had this light glowing out of the microscope and so I sat down at the microscope to see what I had left next to it that I hadn't finished because there was some experiment I was doing and there were some worms growing on a plate that I had supposed to look at the, the day before or maybe even two days before. Was, they had just sort of been left there by the side and I had been distracted. So I took a look at those, that plate and that was when I noticed that the Arnie interference process had, could uh, transit generations because what I had injected RNA to try to you know do a silencing of a gene required for embryogenesis. And what was growing on the plate now were the progeny of the animal that I had injected. Not So normally you would inject the animal and you would look at the progeny to see the effect of the RNA on the embryos that that animal was making. Well now the animals that had been the progeny of that animal were adults and they were making their own progeny. And because I had missed the right time to look at them, I looked at this plate and it was the plate was covered with embryos that had arrested development. Hundreds and hundreds of embryos had arrested development. I had started that plate with one worm that had been injected to try to silence the gene in that animal. And if I had looked at the right time, I would have seen that that animal made a lot of progeny or embryos that arrested development with the defects caused by knocking out the gene that I was targeting. But in fact, I had waited too long and the progeny had grown up made their own progeny, and now I was looking at the grandchildren of the injected animal, and they were making dead eggs. And so I looked at the, I took the dead eggs, the embryos that were arrested in their development, looked at them on the microscope, and I saw that they had exactly the phenotype that I had tried to induce in the previous generation, and it had, it had transmitted from one generation to the next. And that is something absolutely unheard of, I knew this very well because when you do a DNA transformation and you inject into the animal, uh, it's very hard to get a transmitting effect like that. And I had injected RNA, which should not have this kind of inherited effect.